Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have a new romance recommendation trope video for you and today we're going to be talking about single dads in romance books. Baby, baby. So I have done a single parent romance recommendation video, I'll link it down below if you want to go check that out, but this time we're going to be specifically focusing on single fathers in romance. So let's dive right on in to these books. I love so many of these. First, I have Just a Heartbeat Away by Cara Bestone. This book is so good. This book is also a slow burn, so if you can see, if you don't know me, I tab books where there are kissing scenes, love scenes, you know, and they're all at the end. <laughs> because this is a very slow burn book but the payoff is freaking fantastic okay this is one of my favorite romances of the year i adore this book this is about sebastian and via so sebastian at the beginning of this book he is a new widow or widower he is struggling to be a single father right now he is kind of neglecting his kid he doesn't mean to he just doesn't know how to function and take care of him by himself and so his son's kindergarten teacher, whose name is Via, um, gives him some tips and tricks and advice on how to be a parent and how to like start over taking care of his son. And so Sebastian is very grateful for Via, owes a lot to her and the advice that she gave him, but it is a couple years later, she's not at that school anymore, neither is Sebastian's son. Via is now a school counselor at a different elementary school. Sebastian's son just so happens to be at that school as well. And so they run into each other again because Sebastian is very much now involved in his son's life. He's uh, at school all the time, um, volunteering, helping out the school, and he is also on like lunch monitor duty because that's what parents do at this school. And so Via and Sebastian are forced to interact with each other quite often and they get to know one another, they become very close friends, and there's obviously there this attraction between the two of them. However, Sebastian is in his late 30s or early 40s, I can't remember, and Via is a young 20 year old. And Sebastian thinks this woman is never going to want to be with me because she's a young 20 year old who wants to have fun, go party, live life, travel, whereas I'm perfectly content with this life that I have with my son and family means everything to me. But little does he know that just because Via is 22, 23, whatever the age, that doesn't mean that she wants all of those 22 year old stereotypical things out of life. She wants a family, she wants love, she wants someone to care for her like Sebastian will. <laughs> Via and Sebastian's son are so cute together as well. It's a beautiful read. Please check it out. If you love Cara Bastone, you just, you need to read this. She is an amazing freaking author. Next, I have Steph's Outcast by Ruby Dixon. This is the first Ruby Dixon that I have come across, I want to say, that has a single parent trope at all in there. This is book number 14 in the Ice Home series, which is a spinoff to the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I do recommend that you read these books in publication order because you will be very lost if you just jump into this one. But again, I'm not the reading police. I can't tell you how to read books, but I just advise that you read the books in order because you might be very lost if you check this one out by itself. So this is about Steph, who is one of the new wave of human women who crashed onto this planet, this ice planet, and she lives on the beach with quite a few other women. You meet the hero of the story, Juth, in a previous book, Raven's Return, because he tries to kidnap Raven and take her as his mate and be a mother to his son, but he doesn't know any better. So anyway, he's like hanging around the camp still and he'll like kind of come in and kind of not like he'll be on the outskirts of the camp just watching with his son pack and steph has noticed this and she'll go and bring him supplies and food and help care for him and he she just wants to be friends with these aliens but then something happens to where um the three of them juth his son pack and um steph are forced to stay in a cave together when steph is injured um, and they're both trying to take care of Steph and help her, even though they don't speak the same language at all because Juth and Pack don't have the translating device like all the other aliens and humans do on the planet. We have our first ever bisexual character written by um, Ruby Dixon, I want to say. Steph is bisexual and she also at some point has a crush on one of the human women on the planet too. So there's like a bunch of things going on in this one, but I really enjoyed this one. You can just tell that Juth really loves Pack and then Steph's love for Pack also emerges as well and it's just so cute. Next I have Bulky by Jessica Kane. This is a very short and hot novella. The single father part in here is kind of interesting, okay? So this romance is between Josie and Gunner. So Josie has a best friend who's a guy. I think they're, they just graduated high school. Um, so they're like 18. For forever, she has had a crush on her best friend's dad named Gunner, who is her best friend's single father. <laughs> and so Gunner and Josie have always been like 
longing over each other and had have had uh, very intense feelings towards one another. But again, Josie is 18 and Gunnar is this older guy. He's a father to an 18 year old, you know? But Josie decides that enough is enough and she finally wants Gunnar to be hers. And so she devises this plan to have Gunnar notice her finally and be with her. Of course, this is very entertaining. Jessica Kane books are always very entertaining. The single father aspect in here comes in now and then. They try to keep a secret from Josie's best friend for a little bit, but then there is a confrontation scene towards the end um, between their friends. But overall, this was super fun and entertaining and I loved reading this. Next, I have In Bed with the Highlander by Maya Banks. Sorry for the ring light glare. <laughs> I'll try and hold it like this. Um, but man, I... I loved this one, okay? Um, this is about Marin and Ewan. So Marin just so happens to be the long lost heir to the Scottish throne. And so many people are after her and she gets kidnapped by this evil man. And while they're traveling to his keep, they come across this little boy who has gotten lost and cannot find his horse and cannot find his clan. And the evil guy takes him and the heroine in here decides to protect him and keep him safe until she can find a way to escape. So they can both leave. Um, and so finally they find a way to leave and escape. The little boy claims that his father will protect her and that he's a clan leader and he will thank her for saving him and everything. So they travel all the way back to this little boy's keep and Ewan, the hero in here, is that boy's father. And so he's obviously very grateful that Marin, the heroine, saved his son, but he's also very suspicious of this woman and uh, wants to know why everybody is after her. And once he realizes who she truly is, he devises a plan to marry her himself. Please be aware of the trigger warnings in here. Um, the guy at the beginning is very abusive, so please be aware of that. Like the evil guy at the beginning, not the hero of the story. <laughs> um, but I loved his heroine and how she adored this little boy. Like she adored him. There is a point in the book where they have to get married. And even before that point, the little boy starts calling her mama and it's so cute. I adore this one so much. I love Maya Banks, so yeah, I really recommend this one. Another historical that I have to recommend to you is The Many Sins of Lord Cameron by Jennifer Ashley. Now this one for the single dad, it's of a kid who is older. I think he's around 16 or 17. So this is about Cam and Ainsley. Uh, like six years ago, Cam caught Ainsley sneaking into his room during like a party or a gala or something at their at Cameron's house. He caught her sneaking into his room to try and steal something and he finds her so attractive and he steals a kiss from her, but she makes him stop because she is married at the time. And six years later, she is now a widow. But for the past couple of years, like both of them have not stopped thinking about the other person. The other person always been stuck in the back of their brain, like they're thinking about them. It's six years after that first kiss and Cam catches Ainsley stealing something from his room yet again. And he's finally like, this is enough. This woman will finally be mine. She is a widow now, I want her. But he's very hesitant to have her because he does suffer some PTSD and trauma from his first marriage because his wife was very abusive towards him. And Cam is a single father. He has a 16, 17 year old son. Um, and I think he even has his own book throughout the series in one of the books. And he does play a role in here too. He does a little bit of scheming and conniving to try and get Ainsley and Cam together. And it is so funny. Next, I have a very underrated book, okay? We have Intertwined Hearts by Kimmy Flores. This one really reminds me of Just a Heartbeat Away by Cara Stone. So the heroine in here, she is the kindergarten teacher to um, a little girl. And it is the romance between that little girl's father and the heroine. So Caleb's daughter is in um, Abby's class. And so Madison, this five-year-old girl, decides that she loves her teacher and she loves her dad. And so they should be together. And so she kind of like schemes a little bit and she wants them to be together so badly. But this one is so stinking cute. I haven't read this one in a few years and I kind of want to do a reread, but I think this is just such a breath of fresh air. And I know that a lot, a lot of people have read this book. It is so, so, so underrated, but it is so good. And so are the rest of the books. Each book is about one of the girls in this friend group, like Abby and her friends. Each girlfriend has their own book. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed this one. Next I have Welcome to the Dark Side by Jonah Darling. The single dad aspect in here is very unique. <laughs> so if you didn't know about this book, this is about Zeus and Lou, and they met when Lou was a little girl. Zeus ends up saving her life, I think which is around, I don't remember the age, like seven or something, I don't remember. And he ends up saving her life, but by doing that, he ends up committing a crime at the same time. And so he gets sent to jail. And so they send um, letters back and forth to each other throughout the years. Um, Zeus is 
very older than her 20 years 20 year age gap between the two and nothing romantic ever happens between them you know but then it is years later and lou is around 18 or 17 i want to say um granted also this book isn't set in canada and i think the age of consent is different in canada but anyway it's years later and zeus is finally out of jail and lou sees him for the first time and both of them cannot help but be very 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 attracted to each other even though it is quite forbidden and the single father aspect in here is very interesting because he has two children um one of which is in the same grade as lou and the other is i believe a grade or two older than lou um so lou knows both of his kids because they're in school with her so it is very interesting there's a lot of aspects to this book but it is one of the hottest books i've ever read and it is very good so please check it out. <laughs> Next, I have another historical for you. I have It Takes Two to Temple by Kat Sebastian. So this is the romance between Ben and Philip. Ben is going to be a vicar or he is the town vicar. And he hears about these children in this house that are kind of raving rampage around the town. So he decides to go help these kids out and kind of be, I want to say like their nanny, but they don't really call it that. He goes to take care of them. But he realizes that his, that the house staff are the people like taking care of them as much as they can because their father is not present. He is away at sea. Um, and his name is Philip and he comes back um, from being at sea and um it's the romance between ben and philip um it's very forbidden because apparently in that time period obviously um men were not allowed to be together philip loved his wife dearly he's struggling with having a committed relationship since his wife died he's struggling with that but he has a had experience with both genders before i don't really know what his sexuality is specifically but um ben is struggling a lot with his feelings because he is a vicar but of course this is a romance so there's gonna be a happily ever after so everything works out in the end but um philip is struggling a lot to be a single father and ben is trying to help him with that so that is a very big portion of this book this book really reminds me of the sound of music i always pitch this book as a gay version of the sound of music without any music <laughs> next i have eleanor and gray by Brittany c cherry this is kind of a second chance romance uh, between eleanor and gray when eleanor and gray were in high school they met each other at a party one time and um they became very fast friends um gray was kind of in like the popular group whereas eleanor was kind of like the shy quiet girl with a nose in her book in the back of the room but they became very close friends and they kind of really connected when it came to grief both of them were experiencing grief and that's how they connected as friends they were just starting to be romantically involved with one another when um, Eleanor's father decides to move them across the country. It's years later since her and Grey last spoke to each other or saw each other and she moves back to her hometown um, and she decides to apply for a nanny position not knowing that the position is for Grey's family. Grey just lost his wife. His wife just recently died and he has two daughters that need help. Um, he needs a nanny to help take care of his two daughters. And Gray is apparently very different from when he was back in high school. He is now very broody, very stoic, and doesn't want to feel any deep emotional feelings really anymore because of the horrible things that he has been through with his wife. And so Eleanor kind of helps this man become the man he's always meant to be and help him deal with his grief and also help these children out because they need it as well. This one is so good. If you want a good cry, read this book. If you just want a good romance, read this book. Just in general, read this book. <laughs> And lastly, I have Untouchable by Talia Hibbert. This is another nanny romance. So this is the romance between Hannah and Nathaniel. And I believe they knew each other in high school. I don't know. I don't think they were together in high school, but they knew of each other in high school. So Nathaniel and Hannah end up meeting one day um, at a park. Nathaniel is recently a widower. And so he has two children. And the children get along really well with Hannah when they meet her. And he's like, hmm do you want to be their nanny because you work really well with them and she's like okay um <laughs> and so they have to bottle up their feelings that they have towards one another because they do have feelings for towards one another um because it's kind of forbidden because she works for him you know and nathaniel doesn't want to take advantage of her because she works under him you know he claims he's not going to reveal any of his feelings because he doesn't want to make her feel uncomfortable in his house and so he believes that <laughs> hannah is untouchable like the title Charlie hibbert is a great writer so of course this book was 
amazing. Please check it out. Anyway, so you have another 10 books that I have to recommend to you that have the single father trope in them. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have made it this far in the video, leave me any kind of kid or baby emoji that you find. Um, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Thank you.